Cool. Right. Okay. So. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to just be continuing with the uh, the tutorial from yesterday. So I did the uh, <laughs> I did the uh, I'll just put this on um, put this on full screen. Um, after yesterday, I kind of put it all together, and then it just melted, and I had to because the video I think I did yesterday was um, about two and a half hours long. Computer isn't great anyway. And uh, yeah, so it really struggled. So I couldn't get back online last night. But uh, but yeah, but late last night I managed to kind of put this scene together with the uh, with the character. So basically, all of what you see now is a culmination of um, stuff I was doing yesterday with the uh, the sort of these druid stones, and we've got the base. So they're all sort of fixed in there anyway. And then we've got the character which I downloaded from Mixamo. And what I did was I created uh, a staff, very basic staff. I didn't even have a chance to sculpt that in um, in um, 3D Coat. I just slapped a load of textures on it in Substance Painter, painted some emissive on the globe, and then uh, eventually, basically, uh, put it into Unreal Engine. And as you can see there, what I did was obviously I ramped up stuff on the post processing which I'm going to come to in a minute uh, I dropped some steam on there and I had to mess around with the steam I sort of slowed it down stretch it out and slowed it down so it's more like a mist and it's moving a lot slower I'm going to try and show you how I sort of did that and also all, all things to do with the lighting so for example like uh, some like lighting on the floor here which you can't see obviously I haven't got the controllers <clears throat> visible but I did some kind of like pinkish violety uh, lighting uh, on the floor which is also bouncing off the character and then to accentuate the emissive lighting coming from the globe I've got some uh, point lighting directed near the character's face just going on the floor played around a little bit with the intensity and also I just put a little bit of um, uh, lighting around the edges here just to kind of lift out the background Woo. So um, again, it was just to just so it was all kind of uh, you know basically I guess fill what you could class as sort of fill fill light. But uh, but I think the results are pretty cool. Um, you know, in terms of like whether to have this, you know, you could either go one or two ways with this. You could uh, do a little kind of video pass through, where you know set the camera up, do some little kind of tracking shots with it, which I think some students are, are doing anyway. Uh, and then you know you could put it into something like Premiere Pro or even like a Di uh, DaVinci Resolve, which is a, a brilliant bit of free software that uh, that Rob uh, switched me on to. That's uh, great. That's my go-to source now for uh, for doing editing. Uh, or um, or just do stills. You do like you know if you want to kind of just present it as a concept and just simply just have the character. Uh, you know the the um, ooh, I'm getting a warning. Frame rate is now below 20 frames per second for 80%. I don't know what that is. Uh, I do you want to reduce the quality settings? I'll just ignore that for a minute. Um, yeah, and just do still still grabs of it and work into it. You know, export it and work into it in in Photoshop. The choice is yours, but uh, but you can get some really cool results uh, by playing around with this. I'm just going to hit Escape. So the purpose really of the, of this morning was really just to sort of talk you through um, how I achieve the end results for it so the first thing you might be looking at is and certainly you can look at my videos uh, previous videos uh, on YouTube and I think I've got some on stream as well looking at how to uh, change the sky essentially if I just go and select that now you'll see there in the details um, you can play around with the uh, sun brightness uh, let me see if I can just come around here a sec seem to be missing my if I hit maybe it's because yeah sorry I need to press G there we go so first of all you can see the lighting so I've got a bunch of lighting set up here uh, for example I've got one here on the uh, the stone you can see there and it's casting a bit of sort of light on the stone there 
And again, if you click on the right here, this is where you can kind of play around with all the different kind of shades. If you want to make it like, say, green, you could do that. And then uh, take up the intensity. You can see that there. And also, if I just undo that, <clears throat> things like attenuation. Now, attenuation is quite tricky to play around with. But the attenuation is essentially, I've got that stuck at about, what, a 1,000. Um, if I just select that, is it going to show? Oh, there we are. <clears throat> you can see there is basically the radius of the lighting influence. Now, this is really tricky to deal with. Probably the best thing to do is just key in the numbers because it's like as soon as you kind of get to the end, it just drops off. So I've got that set at about 298. Let's say I set that at, say, 150. Hit Enter. You can see there now you've got a bit more control. And if you want to, say, drop it down to, say, 100, you can do that. And it just basically means it, 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 it gives you a bit more control with the lighting. Again, I'm just going to undo that on there. There we go. Um, with uh, so and basically applied that throughout the scene. So placed uh, some of it. Sorry, I've just selected the uh, steam there. Just come off that again. But you know you can select these things here and adjust them over on the right. But the main things I was playing around with with that uh, scene was uh, obviously the lighting color and the attenuation radius. I got set that at a thousand. Uh, obviously, yeah, sorry, the intensity is that as well to kind of play around with. But I wanted these pockets of light because what I often see uh, with work is um, things are overlit. And you really want pockets of light. Ideally, that's what you want. So we've got things like uh, the intensity, we've got the color, the attenuation radius. A lot of the other stuff that I didn't really sort of play around with. Uh, things like light mass didn't really have an impact. So those are the main things there. So that's with the lighting. Uh, with the character, because obviously it's got emissive lighting going on there, um, it's not throwing off, uh, throwing off enough uh, light. So what I did here was I set up a light here, blue light. And if I just, I think I've got it set on maximum. You can see that there now. So basically, what I've got going on there is like false. It's like a sort of false light where it's like it's coming from the staff. If I didn't have that, it'd just look like that. So I put a light in there and then brought that light in quite intense just to um, just to kind of give that impression that it's coming from the um, coming from the from the globe. And then behind the character, if I can select it without selecting the steam, can I actually do that? Is it going to allow me to do it? I don't think so. Let's have a look. There we go. So what I've got going on there. If I zoom in there with that light is, I'll just bump that up. So I've got like a bit of backlight. So it's just like a fill light, just so it's not like that. And completely, you know, it's not completely black, but it's very dark. Whereas if I uh, try and create this illusion that the light from the runic uh, writing is being bounced off the back of the character, you can drop some in there like that as well. And then it's up to you what uh, you know what how intense you make it. I think I did a little bit here as well. I forgot. Can I just zoom in on that? I'm not sure if that was for the character as well or not. Let's see if we can zoom in. It's not going to let me select it, is it? This may not have been for the character. This might just be for lighting. Yeah, it might just be for the lighting uh, on the floor there. Um, so we've got that there. Uh, and again, you know, just obviously you've got to look out when you're lighting scenes as well. You've got to watch out for um, like uh, cross shadows. So if you've got like a strong light, so these are quite soft. So we're not, it's not necessarily interfering with the character. However, what you want ideally is like the light that's coming from the globe itself to kind of cast, cast the shadow ultimately. It's, it's, it's as if he's holding like um like a, a lamp. So again, you know, you can um play around with that to your heart's content. But yeah, but obviously you've got other lights cancelling out that light as well. So it's not going to be that strong because you've got other little light sources. So that's pretty much it with the lighting. Um 
in terms of uh, to try and get it dark as well this is where you're gonna have to have a bit of a play around so as you'll see here I've got if I just click on the sky now uh, you'll need to turn off let me just widen that a little bit you'll need to turn off colors determined by sun position um, I'm not going to turn that back on you will need to once you've done all this by the way you'll need to um, rebuild your lighting as well that's something to think about I've changed the cloud speed on this so as you see there you can sort of turn that down so it's a lot slower but I had it kind of sped up just to kind of create this kind of slightly kind of weird mystical kind of vibe uh, played around with the opacity as well so I took the opacity down on there uh, I took up this this brightness of the stars you can see there I've got like a starry night sorry there it'll pop up uh, the height of the Sun there we go uh, the height of the sun what i did there was uh, you can do it manually on the on on here but basically let's just see if we can scroll around there we go click on the little sun symbol there and then what you can do is uh, you can rotate it down so it basically it's it's down below you can't see it here obviously but you can you can do it that way uh, i changed the color to black as well and because um, I basically wanted it completely dark now if you're doing this if you're following this like later on if anyone's watching this video and you say no it's not working you will need to build the light you may do this and not see any kind of changes or it may just be you know fairly um, you know uh, innocuous uh, you'll need to build the light so you'll need to you know because you're not going to get an accurate reading otherwise so you'll need to go to build and build lighting only okay build lighting only uh, so that's it with the lighting. So you'll need to basically turn the sun off and um, you can play around with the cloud speed. You can play around with, uh, like say, things like the, the stars uh, and the darkness. And then it leaves you then a kind of clean canvas in a way to then build the light back up in your scene. So you've not got any of that going on. Um, the uh, the steam. I'll see if we can click on that. That's a bit trickier to do. So what you can do is uh, on the actual steam particle. So if you don't know where that is, you'll find that in the start content and particles and the steam itself. Now if you double click on that, it'll show you all the kind of settings. And essentially for the steam in my scene. I played around with things like uh, lifetime so you can um, um, this is really where I think there's no kind of set I mean maybe I'll have to do a video on this uh, at some point but uh, essentially I sort of increased it I think it was set at zero I sort of increased the number of that number of these so lifetime uh, initial size I didn't play around with uh, I didn't play around with that I didn't play around with the color but of course you can change the color if you like uh, size by life uh, I didn't I did have a mess around I think with the lifetime with the um, settings at the bottom here I did uh, sort of drag some of these down I think one of the things is you're just gonna have to experiment with this but essentially what I wanted to achieve with the um, with the steam is I wanted to kind of get this like slow um, let's see if I can just zoom in a bit there I wanted this kind of slow mist sort of effect so certainly if you go into lifetime uh, you can mess around with some of these settings here um, you don't necessarily need to um, worry about any of these other ones like things like color unless you want to um, and uh, I think that was pretty much it that I played around with in this um, I think it was just the lifetime of it so basically just kind of changing the the, the speed now Aside from that, on the right hand side, you can also play around with some of these things. I set, set it to 1.0, but I think um, it, might sh it might sort of slow down. Basically, it's like the um, how slowly it creeps in, so it's, it's things like that. But like I say, play around with it, experiment with it. You know, um, it's the only way you'll kind of like get to grips with it. You know, it's not it's it's not like a oh, what's the button that I click to kind of do this? It's one of the things you're just going to need to experiment, and you'll probably come up with some stuff. And the great thing is as well, when you experiment with stuff, 
you can share this with other people, which is great, and um, find things out. Because otherwise, you know, it's not, um, you know, it's a very good way of kind of coming up with ideas. So that's what I did with the uh, with the uh, with the steam on that. Also, what I did was I, if I just hit the scale tool, I squeezed it down. So originally, if you if you kind of play around with it, it does this thing where it's kind of it's like the steam is kind of set up where it's kind of it's like steam coming out of a out of a chimney and what i did was i squashed it squashed the entire thing down so it's kind of like almost like a ground level so then when you kind of play it back i just go f11 it's not creeping in yet but uh, but you'll see it as it starts creeping in eventually it's a lot kind of closer to the ground and um, yeah it just looks a lot more ethereal and eerie and creepy although it does seem to have disappeared maybe it's because I messed around with the um, the delay on that let me just come out of that a sec let's have another look it's probably because I messed around with it Undo some of that. Let's have a look. I'll just zero that. Or put it onto one. sort of see it creeping along. Um, so that's it with that anyway with the uh, with the mist. And then uh, and then finally uh, the uh, effect. So you'll see there if I just go actually if I just go back into that now you'll see there we're, uh, we're getting some like refraction on the lens going on there. And that's to do with the post processing. And if you've seen uh, my um, a previous video uh, where I was uh, putting those uh, paint effects on Paul's model. Um, essentially, if I just come out of that now and come back to this. Now, in terms of post processing, you go one of two ways. You can either go and click on this outer ring here, that's one way of doing it. It'll bring up the post process volume. Or it should, by rights, if I just go to the world outliner, you can just select it in here. But with that, if I just bring that back now, essentially this is where, and again, it's similar to the steam thing. Uh, you need to look at things like, if I just uh, unwrap some of this, things like uh, the bloom. Uh, you can play around uh, with some of the stuff there. Where we Exposure. And what did I have going on? Let me just check my notes. So yeah, so things like uh, bloom, uh, intensity. So if I just bring this into view now there we go just so you can kind of see I'll just hit G just to kind of get rid of the uh, little uh, tools there and uh, yeah so things like intensity so that's under bloom so basically you can make this thing really zing <laughs> I mean like really really bright which might be good one of the things that uh, I want to do is I want to uh, have a look at, particularly in the advent of uh, Cyberpunk 2077 coming out this week, which uh, I'm probably going to get as a little post-birthday treat. Uh, I'm hearing some pretty amazing things about it. I was just talking to her, John, earlier about this. Um, it's apparently you've got um, eight hours of tutorial time in it and then you uh, and then you get to play you just get to go anywhere it's like it's like open world uh, it sounds amazing probably like i don't know i don't know it could be like who knows it could be like game of the year 
I think what's saying the was it um oh, the uh, the uh, Japanese samurai game um the name escapes me anyway that just got game of the year didn't it I think it got voted in whatever but maybe it's been pipped to the post but I think certainly going through into next year I think that's going to be certainly game of the year anyway um so yeah so you got that kind of thing going on but one of the things yeah I'm got, I went off track there one of the things I um I'd love to do is do a little cyberpunk another uh, cyberpunk uh, scene maybe just a little scene uh, maybe even something like this but just have it where you, you've got like amazing like neon and you know all kinds of stuff whatever it's like very exciting so yeah so you can play around with the intensity like there um threshold again you can play around with some of this here if you so wish and uh the metering mode we come over to uh, here we've got this uh, we've got the exposure which you can kind of play around with that really like zzz, look at that I mean that's mad but again though you could sort of um, I'm not sure if there's a way to animate this maybe I'll need to look into it but to have if you wanted to do a little scene where you're kind of getting like um, a bit of uh, animation going on but that's pretty crazy stuff you know the things that you can kind of do with it i don't know it gives you ideas about things that you can do in terms of uh, whether it's whether it is doing a game or doing um uh just a still you know to for concert art you know um and it's good you see because it does a lot of the work for you and you know i know rob's gone into this uh, a lot i've gone into it a lot as well about you can use a lot of this 3D stuff to kind of do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to concept art. Then all you need to do is like pop it back into Photoshop and then just continue working into it. But the beauty of like when you're working with real lighting or real lighting, virtual lighting, is that, uh, you know, it's bouncing light off all of these areas. So you don't have to kind of second guess it. And it can also give you ideas. Uh, so we've got... Yeah. Of uh, close, close encounters, encounters with the light, light oscillating. oscillating. Absolutely, yeah. Well, Douglas Trumbull, you see, uh, I remember like reading about the making of that. Douglas Trumbull, who did the effects for that, which he also used for Blade Runner, interestingly enough. Um, he used this thing where it's optical effects, but he used to basically bounce, he'd project it, but basically create a. It project, it, so he'd have the footage of the effect, he project it through a prism. To basically create that really beautiful, like ethereal, soft kind of you know, you know, so like in Close Encounters where you got those ships kind of coming over the road, you know, with the mothers rescuing the the child, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, what about that? Do a Close Encounter scene? That'd be awesome. Recreate uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. It's all there for the ta it's all there for the taking. This is why we do these videos, don't we, Rob? It was just to show everyone. It's all here for the taking, folks. You've just got to reach out and grab it and uh, and make of it what you will. Oh, uh, what else we're looking at here? So we've got um, so we've got that going on with the exposure, the minimum and maximum brightness. That's a bit hit, hit and miss there. You can kind of play around with some of this, but basically it'll kind of dampen down, dampen things down in the scene. If you want to kind of have a look at maximum, minimum, bright, it just basically sets parameters. Uh, oops, looks like my battery's running low on my laptop. Let's have a look. One second. There we go, panic over. Right. Um, so yeah, so we've got to, yeah, so you can play around with that, but again, it's up to you. I mean, if I take it off, it, you know, it, yeah, it, it it does it helps kind of constrain uh, constrain the lighting. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other things, things like chromatic ab uh, aberration. Oh, that's good for things like underwater. You don't necessarily need it for this, but hey, what if you do? You know, you could sort of have a play around with that, and maybe it's like. Um, you know the uh, the warlock or the wizards kind of stepped into the scene, and all of a sudden it's kind of gone like Hellblade. You know, like it's all gone slightly trippy and hallucinatory. You know, and uh, you can maybe have a scene like that. You know, um, that could be quite interesting. Again, give you ideas. You know, so you've got your 
you know, he's entered this kind of like um, never world, you know, like a world between worlds or something like that, you know. And again, you could sort of play around with some of the stuff here, you know, where it's kind of, I don't know, I don't know. It's, again, it's just for you to play around with, ultimately, or not, you know. Uh, again, I didn't really play around with the, the dirt mask. Uh, things like the shutter speed again. I mean, I, I don't tend to kind of fuss a lot around with these things. Uh, lens flare. So you could play around with that for sure. That's something that you'll have seen in the uh, game I played around with. Uh, the intensity of that. Again, you can go a little bit overboard. The cool thing is, though, you can end up with the whatever it is that you've got, like whether it's lettering or neon lettering, things like that. It will echo it into your vision, which is pretty cool. So that's quite a nice, uh, uh, a nice thing. And you can also, in terms of the tint, if I just go on that, select that, you can play around with some of that as well. The tint of, of the, um, of the lens flare. So that's pretty mad. So you can actually have it as a different color. And play around with things that way. And again, you know, world's your oyster. I'll cancel that in a way. And you can play around with the RGB so you can make it more red, make it more green, perhaps. Something like that, you know. But again, you know, I'll just undo that. Uh, so I'll take that off there. I'll take that intensity down because you don't want it too much. You, you know, it's possible to kind of go a bit OTT with that. But let's, let's, let's keep it at, say, something like, what was she say? About 0.1. Let's try that. Or I think I had it at uh, 0 0.05. I think that's where it was. 0 0.05. Yeah, there we go. Uh, the I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Bokeh or bokeh, bokeh size. I'm not entirely sure. Again, this is basically just playing around with the um, the blurring of that refraction. So you can make it sort of quite blurry or quite defined. Again, the choice is yours. We've got threshold as well. Again, I'm not seeing much difference going on with that, but um, let's have a look. But anyway, yeah, I, I played around with some of that, but yeah. And um, and I think that was it. And then the other thing was just the vignette, which I think was. Was it down towards the bottom, or was it somewhere near the top? I might have just passed it, so uh, just give me a second. Uh, well, if I can't find it, I think what I'll do is it image effects. There we go. So uh, image uh, vignette intensity. So it's basically it's like old-fashioned vignette, you know, where it's kind of like um, you kind of create this with the camera where you'd be able to kind of like, you know, like old fashioned films where you kind of like, you can darken around the area and, and make that a focus. So again, that's um, something you can play around with there. I'm not sure if you can actually increase the intensity of that. Let me see if I can change it to three. Oh, there we are. So you can play around with the intensity of that because it, it, I think it's manually, it stops at, uh, at one. That's perhaps a little bit too much. Let's try it at two. So basically, you just create that nice sort of darkened area. And again, if it's for something like um, content art, or if you wanted to kind of do like a, a an animated camera going through the scene, then um, you know it's very good for that as well. And it helps you to kind of focus on the scene. It cuts out a lot of the background. Apart from that, folks, but that's pretty much it, really, in terms of, you know, just showing you how I achieved uh, the end results for our uh, little scene. Let's go back to this now. Uh, but I am going to make this uh, video available uh, for you if you want to go and uh, look at this a little bit later. Uh, but I think, you know, I'm really keen for you to kind of play around with a lot of this stuff because... I'm looking at some of the stuff that uh, that you're creating in class, and I'm just thinking, oh man, you've got to get that into Unreal. Play around with the lighting, you know. And I see this with with uh, some uh, some of your work, where it just looks fantastic. I could see you're already, you know, having some fun with it. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it would be a, a really uh, a way forward 
to kind of um, to start really exploring Unreal a bit more and playing around with the lighting. Wow, that's really zinging now, isn't it? I probably ramped it up a little bit too much, but it does look pretty good though. It still looks pretty good. It looks quite hot, but it's still um, it's still quite impressive. And the nice thing as well is you get all the reflections, um, uh, you know, on the you know get gets bounced around as well. Um, but that is pretty much it. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you produce uh, with this, and um, I'm going to see about um, uh, making this available as well on uh, on YouTube. I'm going to put it onto the OneDrive um, because I don't know. I'd like to sort of see people out there, even outside of all of this, have a look at um, you know seeing what they produce and sharing stuff as well. Um, but um, but that is pretty much it, folks. Uh, in these final moments, does anyone have any questions? Silence. Well, I shall take your silence then as a no. And I'm going to bow out. And I'm going to say thanks for watching. Um, Really enjoyed doing this yesterday. I did it, uh, did it on my birthday, and uh, uh, played around with it. And uh, I'm really excited about. Um, I think the, um, yeah, about what you can do in Unreal, but also the uh, emissive paint function in Substance Painter. It is phenomenal. I can't believe that software is free as well. That's that's pretty mad. Um, the things that you can do with it. Um, I think that alongside. You know, using it alongside things like um, ZBrush and even 3D Coat, you can create some magical stuff. I mean, just amazing stuff. So, um, so, anyway, so that's it. So, I'm going to say ciao for now. If anyone wants to get in touch with me uh, later on, they can do. But uh, apart from that, that is pretty much it, really, folks. So, thanks for watching. I'm off now to get a, grab a cup of coffee. I suggest you do the same, or a cup of tea, or whatever beverage that you that you like, and um, I shall catch you all later. So, bye for now.